Did he get hit? Blue? Blue, did he get hit? Blue, did he get hit? Because it's, it's full count. It's a full count. Did he get hit? Why is he on first base? So he needs to come back. It's a full count. That was very close. Right. So they switched batters. Jack, you stay there. It is a full count. So the boy on first base needs to come back to the batter's box. Well, obviously he's not paying attention to the game because this is the fourth time. The count is three, two. Whatever. You guys all need to pay attention to the game because obviously people don't know what they're doing. Another day in the life of umpires having to hear it from youth sports parents. All right, one and oh. I'm going to umpire this game, this whole game. Jack, where's the secondary? Hey, hold on, Jack. Ma'am, I don't need you. I don't need you to keep doing that. We don't have no, no, no. We, we, what we're not gonna do is you're not gonna keep saying this and that. I call balls and strikes. That's right. If I got the count wrong, then the count is wrong. Right, but, but you're not gonna belittle me. But hey, you're not gonna do that. You're gonna be watching from the parking lot. Can we play ball? That's all I'm asking. This parent, like many many others, have displayed is a masterclass of how to not conduct oneself at a little league game. Well, turn around, play ball. Play ball, call some blue. And I am begging all of you, use the lollipop method, anything, please, do anything to not act like this. Because you see, it keeps happening. You wanna know what I just told him? If you don't- We already heard, heard you. I'm gonna forfeit the team. We're so done, shut up we're done, we're done, we're done. The game's over. Okay, hey, boy, huh? Okay. You feel better? Hard. I feel fine. You feel okay? Yeah, I feel great. You're having a game for your kid. For what? Yeah, exactly. Because you want to argue balls and strikes in a little league game? We didn't argue balls and strikes. He, he walked up like a man to you. And this guy's a firefighter who protects your neighborhood. No matter the state, no matter the age. Enough. I'm not hearing another word of anything. Then be damned. No, no, wait a second. Did you just hear me? Yeah, I heard you. Okay, do you want to have a game here? Baseball game. Hey, stay professional for the kids and just do your job. Come on. That's it. Come on. Jesus. You are you mad because the kids are taller than you? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps on happening. In 2019, even Fox News acknowledged the issue. According to the National Federation of State High School Associations, 80% of high school sports officials quit before their third year on the job. One driving force behind the trend is increasingly abusive and belligerent behavior by parents, including verbal abuse, threats, and even fights. In the state of Illinois, it was reported in April, referees were leaving the industry. It's been a nationwide issue for several years, and it seems to be getting worse as time goes by, said IHSA Assistant Executive Director Sam Knox. They also lay out the raw data. Ten years ago, 13,700 officials licensed in 20,900 sports. Five years ago, 12,000 officials, 19,000 sports. Today, 9,500 officials in 15,000 sports. June has been a difficult month for umpires in youth baseball leagues. Over the weekend of June 10th, 17 parents were ejected from baseball games run by Central Iowa Sports for heckling umpires and other bad behavior. To combat this, Central Iowa Sports instituted a stricter no-tolerance policy, which seemed to have worked as the following weekend, the number of ejections dropped to only two. However, Having a high number of parents causing issues is something officials haven't seen before, according to Danny Kern, the baseball director at Central Iowa Sports. Last weekend was the worst weekend that we've had that I can remember for ejections. It was pretty much 17 to 20 in one day. The Washington Post reported in the state of New Jersey. A travel baseball league game allegedly saw an umpire attack by a coach in which it said the 72-year-old umpire had his jaw broken in two places and needed extensive dental surgery. The umpire was said to have ejected a coach for violating tournament rules by aggressively arguing a call, at which point the coach approached the ump and delivered a sucker punch. Hey everyone, my name is Mike Colasar coaching baseball for the past 20 years, run a baseball facility and travel organization for the past 10 years, college baseball coach for the past eight. 
I run a collegiate baseball league here in New Jersey. At a youth game, a coach who was drinking in between games, so upset with the call, with the umpire, and punched him in his face. 70-year-old man. And then he fled off. What are we doing? What are we teaching these kids? And the parents of that group screaming out that he deserved it? How bad can it be? And it won't be long before we lose baseball completely because nobody's going to want to ump these games. You wonder why there's a shortage. Who would want to do that? Who wants to spend their time? These guys do four to five games a day during, uh, on a weekend just to make an extra dollar. And this guy's probably doing it to spend money on his grandkids. Kidding me? Ben Amy, now a former umpire, gave it up because of the abuse. He told the Times Union, You know, I've always loved baseball, but it's just gotten out of hand between the kids and the parents. Mostly the parents is honestly the worst part of it, Amy said. And the Capital District umpires are actually paid better than most other umpires nationwide that I've seen, but it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth working two to three games a day on a weekend to have parents who don't really know the rules tell you that you were constantly wrong. 